I was actually born uh, almost to the day, nine months after the end of World War II. So I was the prototypical baby boomer. When I was growing up, I literally remember people preparing care packages to go where? Where would you think these care packages were going? Yeah. Europe. Germany, Italy, England. Right? That was you know, the Marshall Plan. But what it meant for somebody like myself is the world was opening up in front of us. Um, we were the only deal in the world. Our economy was, was recovering from the Depression, uh, had come out of the war. There were still some, you know, dips and ups, and, but by and large, the American economy was flourishing. And so we had all kinds of opportunities. Now, you all have all kinds of opportunities, but it is a much more competitive world. The, the message you're going to get from me is there was not much planning going on here. And we were not sitting around a table thinking of these things. And, but, we, but I want to emphasize to you, we had the luxury of doing that. We didn't know we had the luxury of doing it at the time. We just kind of lucked into an era that uh, was a, an easy time to uh, not do much planning and still land on your feet. For those of you who are from Texas, I did what y'all have done. I went off to my state school. And like y'all, I was fortunate that there was a really good world-class university as our state school. So I went off to Berkeley. It was during the uh, 60s, free speech movement and, and uh, all of that on the Berkeley campus. It was a fabulous time to be there. I was actually quite unsophisticated and non political. Um, but it was interesting to watch uh, all of that. I remember Joan Baez. Any of you know Joan Baez, a singer, kind of not in your generation. I remember coming out of a class and she'd just be sitting on the lawn playing. You know, why did I major in chemistry? Back when I was going to school, uh, you majored in what was interesting. Very few of us thought through I'm going to major in this because of some career path. I majored in chemistry uh, because I, I liked it. It was interesting. I got to my advisor in my sophomore year, and he, which was a faculty member, sort of counted. He says, well, you've got more chemistry units than other stuff. So he said, yes, chemistry is interesting. That's fine. <laughs> then joined the Navy. Um, I graduated in 67. It was the height of the now Vietnam who said Vietnam? Yeah, now Vietnam War. There were graduate deferments up until 1967. And then in 1969, the lottery started. So you knew one way or the other whether you were going to be drafted. I didn't have any clue what I wanted to do. And, you know, I was, I was actually happy to go into the Navy. Um, but it was a time when, in some ways, that wasn't really it much of a choice. It was a transformative experience in my life. So I'd say the two, you know, going off to college really did change my life. Um, you know, big, complicated world out there that I didn't, you know, have a clue about and, and learned about it. Going off to Bahrain and uh, I had the fortunate uh, ability to go to Kashmir, uh, Nepal, uh, you know, all through Iran. This is before the. This is back when the Shah was in Iran. All through Europe, uh, Bangkok, Delhi, Agra. You know things that got to see the Taj Mahal. You know things that uh, Amir three years before uh, would would uh, I would have thought it would have been impossible. Went back to Harvard to law school. So I wrote off to the SAT organization and said, here I am in Bahrain. Uh, I'd like to take the LSAT. And sure enough, they set up a test center. Um, I was the only one taking the test. Uh, frankly, got the results back and thought, yeah, I ought to go to law school. That, that was as little planning as it was. Now, my dad had 
been a lawyer, not, it was a sole practitioner, family, he never made a living at it. But, uh, so it wasn't totally outside the family. But why did I go to teach? I've always liked being around. I've never left college. I, I court for a judge for a year after law school and then started teaching at the University of Washington in Seattle. Um, and uh, <clears throat> um, I just never left school. I, I love being in school. I, I love being in college. I love being in law school. I like teaching. Uh, but it really, you know, it was a fairly, I don't know, coming out of law school, prestigious kind of thing to get. It's very competitive. So, yeah, I got an offer at University of Washington. I thought, well, why not? I, I hate to say this. I don't recommend it to you. Uh, but I just kind of lucked into it. Right? I really have never sat down and said, here's my game plan for life. And I think that there's an existential choice there. Um, and I applaud you for what you're doing in college. Uh, college is a way to find what you want to do. Now, you need to do it in a systematic way so you, uh, you know, you're taking the right kinds of things so then when you get to be juniors, you can progress. You don't have to go around and start over again. That's one of the great things about undergraduate studies. That, that, in fact, that's one of the things that we design uh, into it. Um, but I think there's a little existential choice between his life to be lived or is it to be executed according to a plan that you had. And yeah, I think it's the right balance of that. I had the luxury of growing up in an era when you didn't have to give a thought to what tomorrow was going to be like. That, that's not quite literally true, but you did have to give a lot of thought to what five years from now was going to be like. Never thought I'd be dean, never aspired to be dean, never thought I'd be president. Didn't, you know, I'm glad I did it all. I've, I've been really blessed.